Well, hello, YouTube. Oh. How is everyone? Everyone being all right? Good. All right, tonight we're going to be painting our old little chappy here. And we're going to be using our old little chappy here. <clears throat> we're going to be using the Citadel paints. This one is, oh, come on, focus. Moot Green. Hmm. So what do we need to do some painting? Well, with the acrylic paints, I've got acrylic thinners. Glass of water, the paint, some toilet roll. These are all things that I use. Cotton buds, or Q-tips if you're in uh, the United States of America. Cocktail sticks, toothpicks, whatever you want to call them, for mixing, and a selection of brushes. This is just half of the collection. The rest is in here. Along with water slide transfers. So, one more thing. I got these real cheap. I think I got 40 in a pack for a pound. Shot glasses. Really handy for putting your thinners in. So you don't have the whole bottle evaporating everywhere. All right, let's pick a brush. You don't want the brush to be too stiff. You don't want it to be too soft. So this one that I'll be using tonight, I got as a pack from a shop in the UK called The Works. And it was only £2. They come in packs for four. You've got nylon detail paintbrushes. Nylon round brushes, and I think these were. They were a different range, but I can't remember what the hair was on them. I think they are also uh, nylon brushes. I think. So. If you are going to be using the fins, and give your paint, helps if you open it. Crap, 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 crap. Give your paint a bit of a spin. you are going to be using the thinners just a drop or two but don't mix it in your main paint pot I use these little foil cake tins you can buy them individually that was crap You can buy them in bulk packs. 
or to save yourself a bit of time and if you ever get hungry just buy some in the uh, cake aisle but before you use them give them a good wipe out so you don't have any of the oily residue from one from I'm going to pour a little amount into the little uh, cake tray. It's the only thing I don't like about these paints is when the retainer clicks over. Sorry about the noise in the background. Kids are playing up. The joys of lockdown. In all honesty, this is the first time I've used thinners in any modeling project. So it's just purely an experiment. I'll mess it up so you don't have to. Okay. Like that. <laughs> Another mix. I'm trying the thinners out tonight because every time that I've painted a model using the Citadel paints, it always seems to leave the brush marks. I want to try and get a nice smooth finish. So rip off a bit of toilet roll. water nearby dip brush in water right. paint and away you go now if I had an airbrush I'd be doing this with a couple of uh, light passes that's the only thing I don't one of the only things that I don't like about painting with a brush is that it goes on thicker but the problem with that is if it goes on thicker it'll come off in one piece if it ever gets chipped With this being a first layer, you don't have to be too fancy about how well it goes on. That is the other thing that I have noticed and quite like about the Citadel paints. You'll put them on, keep working around, by the time you've come around, to say back here 
It's great. The Citadel paints, I believe, were designed primarily for wargaming. And that's what their primary purpose is. I think they're made in the UK in Nottingham. I think they were in France at one point, but came back to the UK. With this being the first layer, as you can tell, I'm not being fussy about direction of brush strokes. Like I can see that's starting to dry already. The cab side's practically dry. I'm able to get a go good couple of coats. One thing I did forget to mention is if you're going to be doing any sort of painting or modeling have a picture of the whatever it is that you're doing if there is one available if it's a complete original custom you won't have that luxury for me i got this cheap at a local toy fair it cost me a pound as you can tell it's battered no face Missing buffers. I've only got one complete full buffer. But it will give you the generalisation of what you need. Missing the cab, uh, cab roof as well. So where your black bits are black. You've got the perfect example to follow. And a little word about the moot green that I'm using. That's spelled M W T. M yeah, M W O T. To me, after a fair few years of experimenting and finding, when this paint came along, to me, I'd found the colour that they use on Sodor. So much so, yes, I know this isn't exactly a class five, but there's an end gauge of the static class four, I think it is, standard four, that I painted up to be Henry. I wish his webcam would do. zoom in properly, but. I'm sure you can just about see there. 
the green. Compared to the uh, Hornby, it is a little bit a bit, little bit lighter, I'd say, than the shade of green used for the Hornby model. To me, it gives the best colour for the TV series as well as the books. Now, those of you who don't know me, I usually prefer working to the books. And if the books aren't quite up to par, even though they are, I will try and find the proper prototype or build one. As you'll see later on in this series, we'll be working in various gauges from N gauge, which we've got a project for an eight foot by two foot long railway board that you can join on our patron to help if uh, you wish uh, to help that project move along uh, and I would be considering potentially giving away that layout In, the f in a future future video but first of all it needs to be built <laughs> I will be posting polls up on my Twitter and if uh, YouTube would let me do it I'll put a poll up here to see what you want on the layout I am already working on an N-Gage Tidmouth Sheds. There'll be a video of that coming out. Uh, another future video that I'm working on is building trees from old Christmas trees. Save you having to go and bother the elect friendly electrician down the road who doesn't mind you nicking his wire. If you've got one of the the old Christmas trees that you have to put the individual branches on. Well, there's a start. You've already got the twisted wire. So about that, that's for a future video. Once things start to settle down a little bit more, I will be starting to do more videos per week at the minute with life being a little bit hectic at home i've only been able to do a couple of live streams and my introductory video that is all going to be changing so if you know the people who are into model railways or wargaming because i will be going into the world of wargaming as well building terrains and so forth and you'd be more than happy to join me on that journey as I experience another modeling medium from what I've been told it's basically going to be the same same as model railway in it's just the scales are not the scales used in model railways so when it comes to while you're painting when it comes to small details like around the spring 
detail on this particular on this casting you've got a couple of options move to a smaller brush cocktail stick or just lather it all over and then pick out the detail later when you paint that colors detail I'm going to paint over it because this paint's drying fast enough that I can do it and then when I get to the blacking out work I'll use a smaller brush and brush in all the smaller detail and this first green will also become the like a base coat I've already primed it using a cheap car spray primer from Poundland, I think it was. Yeah, Poundland. And as you could see before I painted, it gave it a nice smooth finish. Before I put the primer on, because this project is something that I put to one side a fair few years ago I had painstakingly used a compass a protector from the math sets that you never quite use in adult life and scraped and scraped sanded and used wire wire wool to take it down to bare metal in case you're wondering where the face is, that is in a drawer up there. So far, I'm liking this, the way that it, the way it's drying so nicely and smooth. So, I'm still waiting for the motor to turn up and the brass gearing to be able to motorize this one properly I've also from last week's video I've also ordered a small amount of brass sheet to make the chassis I felt the cardboard one was a little bit flimsy but wasn't able to support everything that it needed to but if there's anyone who knows of an 060 saddle tank O gauge chassis kit that's available separately leave a leave a mention in the comments below and i'll check it out
I normally when I'm painting try and get a uniform a uniform direction of the paint. But I learnt somewhere or read somewhere that if you go one direction on one layer and then say this is the next layer, you go that way on this layer, it helps to smoothen it out. I've never personally tried doing that. I might do it on this just to see what it does. No matter how many times I use this paint, I'm always impressed on how well it dries and how quick. I suppose it's been designed purposefully like that, so that if a war game is doing 20 figures, and it goes one to the other to the other to the other very quickly, I suppose it's easier to do and paint between each layer so they can be finished quicker yep that's the side that i started on and already it's dry and it's got a matte shine to it as it's still drying it's got a satin shine to it Yeah. No time like the present. Let's go over the second layer. Give the paint a quick fix up again. And crack on. As you can tell from the first layer, it's very, looks sort of patchy. That's because of the using a brush. If I had an airbrush, I'd be using that. I did buy one of those starter kits where it was a spray can, piece of pipe, and a pen, the uh, spray pen itself. Yeah. Try to find a tutorial for it just to give a bit more detail on it. Couldn't find anything. Gave up with it. Gave it to a friend. Now, there have been some nights when I've been doing a model and because of how fast this paint dries without realizing it I've done five layers and it's practically finished but there's times when I get impatient and charge ahead and don't wait properly and it ends up with the lining on and the transfers I come down in the morning and the transfer curled up and pulled the paint off very rare that that has happened 
Here it does sometimes. And it's always one of those, why does it have to be me moments? So for all of you watching, either live or when this goes up as a video later, what would you like to see from the channel? How to make grass, how to make trees, how to make how I make my rolling stock. What gauges would you like to see them being built in? I don't mind working in N gauge, double O or HO, O, and gauge one, and the narrow gauge variant of them. But I'm also working on a project of a Thomas layout in TT. For those of you who don't know, TT is three millimeters to the foot and is the gauge in between. N gauge and a blow. I recently won a Jinty body for the old TT triangle. And it was already a custom job. I'll grab it and show you. With everybody through a little puff ball. Don't ask me about the phrase. This is how I got it. So uh, there's much more to come from that. One of the rolling stock videos that I've got coming up is going to be the works coach. Uh, as you've seen in the introductory video to the channel, uh, it's got measurements on. Those measurements are from, they're from Twitter. I can't remember who it is that had them. If you're watching this, message me on my Twitter or comment below and I'll mention you. Uh, but the measurements that are on that were told to me to be to gauge one, 10 millimeter to the foot, which is what the TV series models were made in. Oh, it's that time of the night when I get interrupted. <sighs> Just by looking at her face, the kids are playing up. Daddy's playing rain.
Don't stand there huffing and puffing at me, dear. And it's going to get noisy. She's decided the washing machine needs to go on. Is it on that 12 minute cycle one that you need to put it on? I'll put the 12. already on the second layer and I've already come around to the side that I started on and it's already looking 100% better so if you hear a horrible droning in the background it's not the girlfriend giving me dirty looks, it's the washing machine. It was also just like all the cold out by opening the door. She wants something, she snuck up closer. Yes? I haven't got any until I go to the shop. Remember, that's the cab that we cab side that we started it, where it's still shiny. There, it's still drying. No, but I should be able to get a third layer in before I have to do a mix of paint again. Uh, feel free to jump in and ask any questions if anyone wants. Without dropping the model, would be nice. So I'm hoping to have get this third layer done. Leave that to dry for a few moments. get the black the black shouldn't need as many coats as the green I'm still going to get brush, brush strokes in the paint, but you know what? I can live with that. I've seen full size steam engines painted, and you can see the paint strokes in it. The uh, brush strokes, sorry.
so I think I mixed just about the right amount of green with the enamel thinners, uh, the acrylic thinners, just to get three coats. some weird way I always felt sorry for the steam engine that get all these coats they never have a fur lined one a fake fur lined one before anyone questions or states that I'm wrong the only time an engine ever got furred up coat was when they were getting the boilers cleaned out and the furred up tubes and if the workmen were unfortunate it sprayed all over them and sprayed it all over the engine they were trying to clean Like I said earlier, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'll get around to them. Very nearly there. Once you get to the front edge of the cap on this side, that would have been three, three layers of the Citadel paint. Marvelous paint dries quick enough for you to crack on. Now, if you are going to be doing this yourselves at home, obviously the green shade that I'm using is a combination of the books and the TV series. This more closely resembles the TV series. As I mentioned earlier, 
if you want more of the books just get yourself a little pallet tray or one of these caked in foils have a mix mix a small smidgen of black with the green and just keep adding the smallest touch of black mix 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 try it out until you get the shape that not the shape the shade that you want that you think will match the books more accurately Excuse me. Right. That's done of the green. Put it down to dry for a momentary. Wash it, brush it up. That's the one thing I do like about the Citadel acrylic paints. They clean easily in water. But if you are worried, get yourself another shot glass. Bit more acrylic fillers and swell like it's mouthwash, just not in your mouth. Now, because I use this brush constantly for green paint for the moot green, I'm not too bothered if it gets. All the brush, all the paint out, or not? Just before you use it again, washing water, washing thinners, and away you go. Uh, small brush. For the black detailing. This I'm using a size zero. I think Depending on which way you use the, uh, if you view the handle of the brush, it's either a six or a nine. Bold Mare registered trademark paintbrush. Mm -hmm. Bear with me a minute while I go and change my water. It's not necessary for you to have a kitchen right next door to your desk with a convenient place sink, but it does help. Well, it helps me. <laughs> uh, 
Mm. Right. Citadel Black. Ta-da! Now, I must say, with these Citadel paints, it took me a while to figure them out. But when I found on the fronts, there's base, there's layer, there's... They've got above the colour, and they've got many wondrous names. Like, this is Abaddon Black. You've met Moot Green. Uh, what's the red called? The red is Wild Rider Red. And the blue that they use is a layer. Techless blue. There are other colours like I've got two versions of yellow. One's a layer. The other one's a layer. But they've got two or three different categories that their paints can go into. There's layer, there's cover, uh, base, layer, and weathering, I think. I'll have a look now. <laughs> I get my Citadel paints from my local model shop. Well, it used to be my mo local model shop uh, when I worked in Bangor. Uh, so, for £2.45, they're all right. The recommended retail price on the website, I believe, is set a bit higher. Uh, just trying to find it and give you some correct information. Uh, paint shop. Four pounds seventy five, four pounds seventy five, hundred and forty six pounds for a base paint collection. Four pounds seventy five seems to be the average if you go through Citadel themselves. So if you do a Google search for Citadel colour, you'll come up with Their paints. But what I'm trying to say is how they're labeled is you've got a few variants on the paint. They've all got their nice colors, their nice names, but then you've got specific layering information labeled on the label. So you've got contrast, you've got base colour, you've got shade colour, you've got dry colour, you've got layer colour, technical colour, layered. And they also do do spray paints and metallic, metallic paints. So that's why you can see my arm in the screen because I'm looking, having to look up the laptop. Uh, give Percy another 30 seconds to dry while I have a quick drink because my throat's getting dry. So, 
So, oh look, the girlfriend's trying to be a funny bugger and telling me I missed a bit. Well, love, you missed a hell of a lot of painting when you'd only did half the kitchen. <laughs> That'd be nice to her, I think. Should I be? I don't know. I'll wait to see if she's watching again and I don't think she is. All right. Let's crack on with Percy's new clothing. <coughs> uh, oh, yeah, you're not the Emperor, you were only the green controller once. clearing here we go again as before open cocktail stick mix because over time even the acrylics settle compared to the humbrol these remix really well in less than 30 seconds humbrol I've been there for 10, 15, 20 minutes on occasion. Just trying to shake it to mix. So for me, that's one of the downsides of the little hobby enamels. Which is why I'm fairly glad when the Citadel paints came along. Bought just a couple just to try them out. Found I liked them. Stuck with them. Again, dip the brush in water. Uh, <clears throat> right, for this one, I will also add a touch of thinners. Get the remains of the cherry pig out of the out of the foil. <laughs> you can see by my, my belly, I'm the one who went for the option of eat the cake and get the tray. Uh, doesn't need too much for the black. Might be able to get away with just scooping some up onto the cocktail stick. There it. Get the brush that you're going to use, brush it down and off. Get the same cotton bed that I used before. Now I know that if I had an airbrush, I could mix these prior to be using. I think for some paint brushes, it's 50-50. Depending on how thick or thin you want it. How many layers you want to do? Yeah. Leave Percy on the brown for this first bit. A 
I'll paint the coal load in the coal bunker first. Right up to where the green is overlapped into the coal load. I will eventually get some real coal and put a real load in. Until then, it's just going to be painted. What I have also found is a cheaper alternative to some of the static or the scenic materials you can purchase. So if you've got a friend who's got a coal bunker still, I know they're rare, but they're still out there. <clears throat> just go outside, have a bit of fresh air, grab a cot lump or two. Stick them in your pocket. There'll be none the wiser. Or do what I've done as a hack in the past. Uh, I used to have budgies. And as part of their feeding regime, they need to have bird grit. Not the sand, the grit. Crushed up, cell, crushed up shells and the like. And once painted, it actually looks fairly realistic and a good representation of a coal load. This is where is the best time to start taking your time. Cap hasn't been painted yet, so you can use your finger to steady. I still need to get myself a desk light. Again, the other side. This is one of the one of those paint jobs where the darker grey primer because even if it even if you can't see the black covering it completely 
the lighter shade of the grey is still dark enough that it gives it some sort of like a shadowing effect. It gives it that little bit of extra depth and realism. <coughs> I'm sorry if you can hear the shouting in the background, that's the uh, kids playing up. I actually don't know how well the microphone is picking up anything really. I know that on the last stream there was a... That might still be able to be heard on this stream. That's just the clock in the background. Joys of children. Right. Gonna add a little bit more finish. Whatever you do, if you do decide to use the finners, don't leave the finners on your cutting mat. Because it will eat away at the markings that are on there. This one that I'm using, as you can tell, is well worn, well battered. And I'm just waiting for a new one to arrive. That the girlfriend does not know about. But if she watches this, I'm sure she'll find out soon enough. And is going to plan on how to get her revenge. No doubt it's going to cost me. <laughs> what is it not for these girls, eh? I think I've thinned down the black a little bit too much. So it starts to show on this finer detail, it's showing through the green underneath. It's definitely gone a bit too thin now. Yeah, definitely. Simple enough fix. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's give all that a good mix. And continue. Over this side just to see if it did any improvement. Oh, yes, lots. Lots better. Let that try a bit more first. Always handy to have these because if you do go over and you're quick enough, you can still wipe away that there excess. You do end up making a paint too thin. Add a bit more paint. Let's just let it dry in between. Even an expert was an amateur once. I'm by no means an expert. There's no doubt there'll be people out there that will probably be screaming at the screen now going, why didn't you mask it off? Why didn't you mask between each coat? I know all that. Like I said, when it comes to doing a darker colour, such as light, I'm 
smaller brush, narrow it. Don't overload your paintbrush. And then choose a direction and go with the flow. Like for this bit here, I'm working from the green away in small strokes. Lightly load it up. The paint tip. Think of it as when you were learning to colour. Colour within the lines. Because you have to do the lines in your head or using a known reference point. Now, when it comes to going around details like the funnel, take extra care. In the past, I have done this by getting a cocktail stick and very carefully just dot dot along. But as I've been able to buy better brushes. through practicing with lots of other projects it will become a bit more natural for you Again, the black is drying just as well as the green. Well, let's go for a second coat. Not going to bother with a second coat inside the cold bunker.
Uh, LA date that is going to be fill with a realistic load. Already, second pass of the black paint. It starts to look a hundred percent better already. Onto the other side of the other set of springs before doing the smoke box again and the cab did three layers for the green might be able to get away with just two for the black So if there's anyone watching, can't actually see the comments or anything, or viewers at the minute. But I'll have a quick check in a second. So if you want to ask any questions, ask away. If you've got any suggestions for future videos or future live streams, again, ask you never know unless you ask
don't forget when you're doing the painting on a cab the very edge of the cab roof also needs to be painted in gives it a nice line nice nice des definition I'll be finished in the next 10 15 minutes. I'll do the lining on the body, all the boiler bands. That's all there really is to Percy. course and just go along the edge with just in case there has been anything over and the light the red lining will be the last I do on Percy for tonight's stream next week I'll do a bit more fitting together and See what it looks like with its chassis and wheels. I'm still waiting for the motor. Uh, next week it might be a short stream of just putting on the number, finishing off the body paint work, like the brass work. putting on its number his number but one of the beautiful things about this particular model is I don't have to worry about masking tape because with it being the Ertel range His lining bands, his boiler bands, are raised ridges, which is nice. Well, that's getting a bit low. I've had this one. I've this a while. I've done a fair few projects with it. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get an info with them. Yeah, now there's two ways I can do the lining. Using the cocktail stick. Or 
Pull the brush. So for this, because I want it as a nice smooth line, I'll use the brush. No thinners this time. Dab away. Is it the only time that I hate? This is the one time that makes me nervous, I mean, when it comes to the lining. Now that looks too wide for me, so I'll probably go back later on and touch up the green paint. And narrow it down that way. Yeah, that very first boiler bun that I painted on looked way too thick. So what I'll probably do is make the red on that very first boiler band that I did a bit thicker. Give the paint a few seconds to dry. And a quick going over with an undiluted, or maybe a slightly diluted pot of green.
got a minute or two to uh, dry. Use the uh, same brush that I've just used to use the red lining. That's that mistake rectified rather quickly. Now, one thing that is plainly obvious from what's missing from Percy is his front and rear cab windows. Now, there is a trick. Cotton bed or something round about the size of that you need. Dip and press against where it is. Let's see if this will work. No, that's too big. Should have thought about this sooner. I'll just do it with a Q-tip. edge on this does not have to be perfect <laughs> ok 
because you can go around it with yellow or a brass paint. Again, you can just get some of the base paint color that you've used. Neaten it up if you want. But it is funny how from behind Hersey looks like duck. <laughs> Quackers. I know, crap jokes aren't they? But there you go. And that is our progress for this week. Hour and 45 minutes, mate. Without the talking, it'll be an hour and uh, hour and a half. You've gone from a primed die cast hurtle to a painted, decorated example. That's close to finishing. Next week, like I said, we'll continue a bit more. We'll do the detail. For the, because this dome, the whistles, they'll be brass painted. We'll put the decals on if I've got the size that I need. I think I have. If not, I'll hand paint them on. I'll dig out the face. Put the face back on and I should have a chassis possibly not out of brass yet but the chassis will be painted up in the week and we'll have a practically complete Percy by the end of next week's stream so if you want to keep on up to date then remember to like share comment on the video hit the notification bell get notified every time that I'm coming live and uploading a new video and we'll catch you all again see you soon <laughs>